Hello, today we're going to look at the beginnings of how we will take our data set and draw pictures of it, or at least put it in tables, put it in an order that makes it easier for us to see the overall data set. So let's have a look at that and we're going to be each starting with line plots and frequency tables. So if we have a question like this that we put to a group of people and say, how many TVs are in your house? And we would get a broad range of answers. So we have a few examples here. So this is the number of TVs that are in people's houses. So a person had one TV in their house, another person had two TVs in their house, another person had six TVs in their house. And at the moment, it's just a whole jumble of answers. So we need to order this. We need to put it in an order that makes sense. So we know that we can put everything uh, into order from smallest to biggest, and we're going to do that in a few minutes. But there's another way that we can order things that sometimes we'll be asked to do and sometimes might be more useful if we need to draw a graph in particular. Uh, and that is to do a frequency table. Now, frequency means how often we see something. So if we said in English that if we saw someone frequently, it would mean we saw them often. So how often we see something is how frequently we see something. So a frequency is how often we see something. Now, to count up in our frequency tables, we're going to use something called a tally. And a tally is just a useful way of collect of um, counting up a particular number of numbers. So if I go through, if I give you an example, if I found uh, a bunch of numbers, like in our list here, and I'm going through and I'm looking for how many fives I find. So if I find my first five, I'm going to put down a single dash for a first five. If I find a second five, I'm going to put down a second dash and a third dash for the third five and a fourth dash for the fourth five. But this is starting to become a bit of a blur, a jumble of sticks of, of uh, lines. So what I do if I find my fifth five is I put a diagonal line down here and I say effectively, this is a bundle of five. And if I found a sixth five, I put down another dash and I'd start my bundles going again. So this would be 10 in uh, written as a tally. I have two groups of five and this would be 11. I have two groups of five and another one. So that's how my tallies work. And it's useful instead of having to keep rewriting what numbers you have found. So we're going to do that here. I'm going to go across my table and I'm going to put a mark in each one of my uh, bins that I've got going on here. Every time I come across someone who had one television in their house, I'm going to put a dash. Anytime I put, uh, find someone who had two televisions in their house, I'm going to put that dash here. So let's go through and we're going to underline as we go. So I've got a one here. So I have, I put a one dash in here. I have two, so I put a one dash in here. And I underline that I've checked that off. And a six, I put a dash in here for my tally. A three, a one. So I'm back now, I'm putting in another dash in the one, another dash in the one. Uh, and I have a two, a two, and a two. So I now have four dashes in my uh, tally for my two TVs in the house. Then at three, I have another dash, four, so my first dash in four, and another six. So now I've counted up how many TVs I have in my different, uh, how many TVs I have in my different houses. So now I can convert this tally into a frequency because all of my numbers are finalized. It's not a nuisance anymore. So three, four, two, one, zero. There was no one with five TVs and there were two people with six TVs. So what have we got? Uh, now we have numbers of TVs in a house and we have the frequency of those houses. So we have three houses that have one television in, in them. We have four houses that have two televisions in them. We have two houses that have six televisions in them. So how can we draw a graph of that to keep track of how many houses have different numbers of TVs? Well, what we one of the things we can do is called a line plot, which somewhat unexpectedly involves 
a bunch of dots as opposed to lines. So what we do is along the horizontal axis, we mark in number of televisions that we've got. And on the vertical axis, we uh, mark in our frequency. So how many of these things have we got? So this is how many people, this is um, having one television in your house and our frequency is going to tell us how many of those people we've got. And for a line plot, we're going to put dots up above uh, each outcome. So I'm going to put a dot on at the top of each box. So I have three dots here. And I've put them in line with the grid in my copy. And the reason this is important is that the dot to get marks for your line plot, your dots have to be equally spaced between all of the dots for all of your different outputs. So I have a one box gap between all of my outputs. I could have also had a half a box gap and that would have been fine too, but I have to be consistent. The gap between my dots has to be consistent for all of them. So then for people who have two TVs in their house, I have four of those people. So I'm going to put four dots above my two TVs in the house group. Three, I have two. There were two families or two households that had uh, three TVs in the house. There was one. There was one family or one house that had four TVs in the house. And then there was two people, two households that had six TVs in their house. And there was nobody who had five TVs. So we might say that these people who have six TVs in their house are outliers. So they are outside of the main group. So most people are in this part of it, uh, but these people have an unusual number of televisions. So we might call these people outliers because they're outside of the main group. This isn't to say anything particularly negative or positive about them. It's just to say that they are outside of the main data group. Most people are over here and they are quite distinct. They are an unusual group. So we call them outliers in this data set. Now, that is our line plot. Now, what we're going to do is have a quick look at mean, mode, median, and range again. And to do that, I'm going to reorder my data. Now, the frequency table allows me to do that very easily, because as you can see, I've effectively gone from smallest to biggest by drawing my frequency table. So I have, know I have three ones, I have four twos, two threes, one four, zero fives, and two sixes. So because of that, I know I can write my data set out like this. One, one, one. I have three ones. Then the next number up is two. I have four of them. So four twos. Then I have two threes. Uh, I have one four. I have zero five, so I don't need to write them. And then two sixes. So if I have a frequency table, I can write out my data set very easily like this because I can see uh, how many of each number I've got and I've already got them in order. Now, sometimes you'll see a frequency table that doesn't have the tally in it, particularly if they just give you a completed frequency table instead of getting you to make one like we did here. And that's fine. If we have the uh, things we're uh, describing and their frequencies, that's all we need. The tally just helps us to get the frequencies without making a mistake. And we do always need to do a tally if we are creating our own frequency table. Now, now we've got our nice ordered list from our frequency table. Let's find the mean. But this is quite a long list and it would start to get annoying if we had to add all of these up. I'm going to write it out the long way and then I'm going to show you a shorter way based on our frequency table, which we might like to do instead. So we add up all of the numbers and divide by the number of numbers We can see how long that's already getting, and this isn't a very big data set. Uh, and we have, if we add all of that up, 
and divide it by the number of numbers. Well, how many uh, how many numbers have we got here? Well, we could re uh, we could uh, count up all of these numbers here. Or if we think about it, if we add up the frequencies, we have to get the number of numbers as well. And that's an easier uh, that's a shorter list to add up. So we have three plus four plus two plus one plus two. Uh, we have seven and five is twelve. So we have 12 numbers in total. So we can add all of that up uh, and we get 33 all over 12, which ends up being 11 over four. And you can leave your answer like that if you like, uh, or if you go to decimal on your calculator, or if you want to divide it out, you can, you get 2.75, but there's a better way because we have our frequency table. And it's important to try and be able to figure these things out. You can see here, I've got, I've got three ones, and I have four twos, and I have two threes, I have one four, and I have uh, two sixes. Now, if I have groups of the same number, how would I often abbreviate that? How would I write uh, that out that I have? three ones or four twos. I would say it was multiply. If I have four twos, I'd say it was four multiplied by two. And I can see here that I can get that from multiplying my number of te televisions in the house by the frequency of that. So one by three, two by four, three by two, four by one, six by two. And that will be a much shorter thing that I have to write than having to write out the whole of this list. So if we can get ourselves comfortable with that, instead of having to write one plus one plus one, we can just say we have three ones. We have a frequency of three ones plus four twos, four twos, plus two threes, plus one four, plus two sixes. And for a big data set, this would be way easier. You can already see it's a bit shorter here, and you're going to get much larger data sets. So it's a really good idea to get comfortable with this way of doing things. And that's my mean done out two different ways. Now my mode. The, the line plot here makes it very easy to see what my mode is because I just look for what is the highest number. Remember, mode is the most frequent number. Mode most seen. Mode is the most frequently seen number. And the most frequently seen number is going to have the most dots. So I just look for which of my lines, which one of my eight bunches of dots, goes to the highest point because that means it has the highest frequency. And that's going to be two. So the most number of people in my group, my data set, had two televisions in their house. Median. Now I've done the work here for the median. I have all of my numbers out in a list and I've counted up and I know I have 12 numbers by adding up my frequencies or by counting my list. So I have an even number, so I'm not going to have a single middle number. I'm going to be between the sixth and seventh number is going to be the middle of my list. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's the middle of my list. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six numbers on either side. So I have these two numbers are in the middle. Now, they're both the same number, so this is going to seem a little bit redundant. But again, if you have an even number, you get the average of the middle two or the mean of the middle two. And that's just going to be uh, four all over two is two. And finally, the range is going to be the highest minus the lowest number. So it's six minus one is five is our range. And that's what we need for now.